We're up to number 17 in the country here in TSU Trenton State Dynasty with 0-4 Sam Houston on the schedule, which is seemingly an easy matchup for us. Of course, this is week number five. And do we have any visitors? I'm fairly certain that we do. If we check visit schedule here, Loper week seven, Byron Willingham was just on campus, and it's Antonio Marcus this week. He's a four-star edge player, top 100 in the country, the number four outside linebacker, and number 13 in the state of Florida. So keeping him in state would be absolutely massive. We're going head-to-head -head against a team that already annihilated us this season in Miami. But I'm thinking that with a win today, even though Sam Houston's bad, I'm thinking that with a win today, we're going to earn the commitment for Antonio Marcus. Now, what's interesting is they did an update today that changed the impact when you do any type of wrong guess with the cell. I, I don't know exactly what the phrasing is, but something like that. When you choose the wrong pitch, there's more of a negative impact now. So previously, I had always done, all right, let's line up the three motivations for the hard cell, and then we'll come back with the soft cell, and we'll get two of three, because you can't double up. Or sometimes you can. There's like a weird glitch where you can get three of three and double up on the same thing. But typically, you're not supposed to be able to do that. And I would just get two, and then the third one, whatever, doesn't matter. But now, I'm curious if it's going to be better to, instead of doing these, you know, soft sell plus social media, if it's making more sense to just do contact friends and family at this point and add the extra 25 that way. I don't know. Someone's going to have to test that. It's not going to be me today because we're going to keep it as is as we'll try and blow out the 75 overall Sam Houston Bearcats. And you know what? I think we're going to wear... A little bit of an alternate today. So these are our typical uh, home uniforms. We have the white helmet, right? Let's go all purple today. Let's try that out. Here we go. The all purple against Sam Houston State. The Bearcats are not rated especially well, but we're going to have to play them like they're the best team in the country. We're going to try as hard as we possibly can. We have a big time recruit in attendance. A top 100 player in the class would be big to add especially at a really important position off the edge. So we're aiming for a blowout today. He's got to play well, make some plays, and not think too lightly of Sam Houston State. I know they're 0-4. I know they're not rated well. But we're going to treat them like it's any other game. Quarterback under pressure. Down he goes. Morgan Merriman got to him. And we might go ahead and blitz again. I like these all purple. Have we ever worn all purple before? This is a great look. Huge fan of this. And they have an inside lead if they want it. Quarterback trying to take off, and he's got enough speed. Dora can't make the tackle. Big gain for the Bearcats, and they're going to be a hurry-up offense. We had them right where we wanted them, third and long, and we let them off the hook. Third and four. Do not let them convert this time around. They're going to the back. I don't know that we're going to be able to get over there and make that play. It's going to be a nice run after catch. We keep getting them in third down spots, and we just can't finish for one reason or another. And that was kind of being afraid of the tight end leaking up the seam there. Would have been a bigger play up the middle, so we kind of helped to that and then let the running back beat us, which ends up not being the right call. But you got to be aware of that. Football comes loose. They're going to say it's an incomplete pass and not a fumble. That seems wrong. That seems insane. Second and 10. Running back gets it up the middle. Hey, he's got just enough speed to change direction and get by everybody. That's been the story of the game so far in this first drive is Sam Houston being just fast enough or just quick enough to get away from tackles, avoid TFLs, avoid sacks. It's extremely frustrating. This time we're not going to blitz on third down. We're just going to see what happens. They're going to run the ball here. They are, but right into the defensive lineman, Landon Dean. And somehow we're going to hold these guys to three. That was a really, really frustrating first drive. Sam Houston was cooking there. And they do end up with three. I thought that was going to end up being just wide left. But 
Bearcats on the board first. And we'll see if our offense can answer. We've been looking pretty good lately. Henry Streeter is a heck of a player. He had an unbelievable game last week. I think going something like 19 of 20 through the air. Heck of a player. And will he be our starter next year? He probably will be. He probably will be. But we, I don't know. Maybe. The thing with him is he is maxed out skill cap wise. He can't ever get any better than what he is right now. So do we have a higher ceiling playing somebody like Manu Incognito, who's already played this year, or Austin Hill, who's got elite dev trait, but is redshirted this year? I don't know. It's an interesting argument. And, I mean, we're going to have to play the best guy, right? So, whether it's Henry Streeter or somebody else, you know, it's going to constantly be a competition, and the best man's going to win. Henry Streeter, we're loyal to, so to speak. He's been a great player for us so far, but, again, we got to play the best guy. As Jeremy Davis is just enough speed, gets a nice block from Branham. Maybe this block is picked up. It is. Spin back. Nice run after catch there you want to call it that, for Jeremy Davis. He's not even especially fast, but similarly to the Bearcats, just fast enough to cause problems as we might try and hook up with Zach Poole on this one. Deep shot. Does Poole have the speed? Does Streeter have the ball? Yes, he does. Great touch and placement from Streeter. Poole can run right underneath it for the touchdown. And it's still so annoying that those sleeves are not the right color. I've explained it before why it doesn't work, but... There was a glitch in Team Builder early on where the team colors did not match up. So when we were creating the team, I had help from a TLA that we've talked about on the channel before. When we were creating the team, we had to change the team colors to get it to actually match the jersey, even though the color on Team Builder wasn't what it actually showed to be in the game. So now that they've corrected that glitch you can see what color we made it to make it match in the first place and now the colors are not really even close which is super frustrating it does look a little bit better with the blackout uniforms and maybe that's why i've been wearing those a little bit more often but it looks a little bit out of place with these all purple the default the away everything uh, other than the blackout so our defense is having some trouble here our offense i mean it almost was too easy but our defense I don't know that we're committing to stop the run enough. I think that's what their game plan is, whether it's to the quarterback or the back. We've got to be prepared to, to take him out. I hate that animation where you run up right on him and you don't get the tackle for some reason. I hate that. That's going to be a really nice play. Where are you going, Emmanuel Berlin? You can see instantly it's the dumbest angle I've ever seen. Not fast enough to be able to stick with Sam Houston here. That's kind of unbelievable. They're a 74 overall team. We just can't hang. Our defense is atrocious. And that's part of the reason why we're trying to recruit defense to the level that we are. Because our current group is just awful. I mean, Emmanuel Berlin has 85 speed. And it was pretty apparent here. Um, he looks like he's moving in slow motion. I mean, that's incredible. Zach Poole with a crease, and Poole can find his second touchdown of the game. Kick return touchdown for Zach Poole. Instant answer. I mean, he's just a big play threat one way or another. Didn't see a lot of the field last year. He was redshirted. This season as a redshirt freshman, he's getting a lot more action. And now with just two touches, has accounted for 14 points. And this one was absolutely electric. Found a little bit of a crease, saw daylight, no one was going to catch him. Pinching our D-line has actually led to a bit of success here. Running back open, but down goes the quarterback. Is that Morgan Merriman in on the pressure? I think it was. We finally get a successful blitz on third down. We keep sending heat. We've been so close to making plays, but just have not been able to finish up until now. Morgan Merriman shoots through, gets his second sack of the ball game already it's only the second quarter I'm gonna try to get Zach Poole the football again I mean it seems like good things happen when we do that and he's got decent speed here we know that we'll take that unfortunately gonna be third and 15 he's gonna take a deep shot there 
for Clay Ivy, and we connect! Strader on third and long, airs it out, and the speed of Clay Ivy beats the Bearcats. Oh my goodness, that's just, you know what? Don't really love anything. Get the football out and up. If they intercept it, you know what? It's an arm punt on third and long. And if they don't intercept it, we just might have a touchdown. DB was in incredible position and then just got bored and stopped playing defense. I appreciate you, pal. He's on the payroll. And now you'd think that the Sam Houston strategy might start to change a little bit. We're really starting to stop the run a little bit. And they've been somewhat successful when they try to throw. We're going to drop back with Quincy Wiggins here. See if we can bait a throw, potentially. Quarterback looking to take off. He's going to get there, probably. Quincy Wiggins actually makes the tackle. Did I call him Wiggins? I think maybe I did the first time. It's just the name Quincy really throws me off. Quincy Wiggins makes the tackle in space. Sam Houston's actually going to punt as a result. Uh, very fortunate that that happened like that. And I'm thinking maybe Zach Poole should be returning punts for us. Although, Lemon's making the most out of that. On the move with Streeter. They forgot about the speed of Henry Streeter. Big mistake. Taking off again. They're not accounting for the speed. Branham with a great block downfield. I just don't want to risk anything. Sometimes when you try to run off the back of blocks, they just insta-shed and, and you can fumble that way. Just not something you want. Barely get out of a sack there. Third and eight. We're going to step up with Streeter. Lower the shoulder, take the hit, and move the chains. We're taking a lot of hits right now with Henry Streeter. I mean, we're risking injury when we do that. But he's been good so far, and he's not fumbling, which is nice. First attempt of the game for Javius Bond is not a good one. Looks like a good route. The ball was not where it needed to be. Zach Poole actually never was even tackled. That's interesting. Pretty good effort to bring us down to the one. Let's we'll see if we can get him a touchdown here. Comes across the formation. Gets a little jet touch pass. And we're going to lose a lot of yards. Tried to turn the corner there. Just didn't end up happening for us. And um, it's something you got to try when you have his type of speed. Not that he's like 99 or anything, but he's got pretty good speed. But they contain really well. And obviously got the result they wanted. Kick is up and good. Siler chips it through. That's the end of the first half. Pretty good half of football for us. We got better as the game went on, at least defensively. And, I mean, we're on the one-yard line. I'd love to be able to punch it in in that spot. It just didn't end up happening. Tried to get a little bit too fancy. And we see a lot of success when we call the jet touch pass in the low red zone. See a lot of success that way, but just didn't happen this time around, and that's okay. Three points is all right. We get something, and we get the football to start the third quarter. Still in the driver's seat. We might try to lean more on Javius Bond and Joey Boozer in this second half. Got a 14-point lead. It does feel like a little bit more right now, but I, I need to extend it. Streeter on the move. Get Branham up the field. Good block, and there goes Henry Streeter. Could try to make somebody miss in the open field. There's just not a point. Don't risk it. Good spin back from Javius Bond. He'll break a tackle as well, bouncing off an arm tackle. His best run of the game goes for six. Zach Poole's on an island. They're actually shading over there to help. We're going to step up with Streeter. And just slide. He's probably going to go over 100 yards today. They're just really letting us run whenever we want to take that route. We can just do it. And they're having a pretty tough time stopping it right now. Zach Poole on the sideline. Nice catch. I'll tell you what. The run D for Sam Houston's actually incredible. We can't run the ball. Unless it's with Henry Streeter, unfortunately. Which is not bad. It's just he doesn't play running back for us. Maybe he will eventually, but... Not right now. And you know, it is weird because you think, oh, when would that ever happen? But kind of a niche example. Oh, no. We just, it would never really look to even throw that at all. Kind of a niche example, but at Montana State, Troy Anderson was all Big Sky Player of the Year 
at least freshman of the year at quarterback. And he was like a hybrid quarterback running back. And then ended up switching to play linebacker. Which is not, you know, two that you'd normally connect. Streeter takes off again. But if Henry Streeter, you know, makes our team better by having a position change going into next season, uh, I'm not necessarily afraid to do that. Even though it would be a little bit weird. It could just be a good move for us, right? So, I'm trying to make this team better. A little lob on the run. Jeremy Davis, nice angle. <laughs> I got a million Emmanuel Berlins out there. You remember that play in the first quarter. Jeremy Davis, touchdown. Streeter kind of making it happen on the run, using that athleticism. But something that we have to remember, when we're on the run, we really need to hold that button down for longer. Really cannot afford to float it in those spots. That's how bad things happen. Didn't happen that time, but the worst thing the ball can do in those spots is float and give DBs an opportunity to make a play on the ball or the receiver. We got to get it there with some zip. I mean, Sam Houston's really establishing the run right now. And they could run it here on third and four. I don't think they're going to, but this should be four down territory. I just don't think it will be for them, but it totally should be. And I actually probably would run the ball if I were them, but that's why I'm not them. What a play. Let's press them. Can our corners win these matchups on the outside? Nope, they don't have to because it's a run and it's a TFL. Dora the Explorer into the backfield. Forcing third and long. Get that running back a map. He had no idea where he was going. That's the end of the third quarter. We will try to close things out at home here against the Bearcats with a top 100 recruit in attendance. This would be big. What a game for Zach Poole, by the way. Seven for 73 with two touchdowns overall. One, of course, on a kick return. Fourth and 12, Sam Houston with really no choice but to go for it. And that is going to be incomplete due to some pressure. I don't even really know where the quarterback was trying to go with the football, but nowhere good. And we will try to put this thing away. A lot of time left in the game, right? But it's a good drive. Should really help put things away. Holding is not helping. It's the true freshman center, Clay Villain. I knew he wasn't ready for this. Now it's second and 16. The clock keeps moving though, which is interesting. Don't mind that, I suppose. Taking off with Streeter. He's got a ton of space. Streeter, certainly over 100 on the ground now. 10 for 103. And of course, was sacked as well. So that number is really actually a little bit higher I see Zach Poole but don't really love the matchup we're just going to keep it on the ground in one way shape or form third and inches Javius Bond converts he has not done much today but again that's okay our passing offense has been so good that I'm not really even worried about the running game right now I do worry that it is Sam Houston State we can't run against that's kind of tough but again it's all right Long season, we're going to get these guys on the ground moving a little bit. And if our passing game's good, you know what? I'm not going to be mad about it. Third and two. Joey Boozer into the game, and we're going to get him an instant touch. Joey Boozer with a burst, and Joey Boozer finds the end zone. Win or lose, we booze. And you got to be 21, just like Joey Boozer. 38 to 10. The freshman extends our lead even more. Down goes the quarterback for a third time. The blitz is starting to get home. And I think we're only going to dial up the pressure here. That was Melvin Jordan, senior transfer. Quarterback taking a shot. That's got to be picked. Malik Moon knocks it out of bounds. And Sam Houston will have no choice but to punt. And we're on the verge of probably scoring 50 points. Not on this drive, obviously. Maybe, if we believe. No, that's it's not possible. But we're going to get close. And I think that if we can score a quick touchdown, not that there's any reason to, I think we will get the ball back. I don't think Sam Houston's going to end up finally figuring out how to play offense now in the fourth quarter. So if we have any type of a quick score, I think we will get the ball back. And if we want to score 50-plus, we'll have that opportunity. It's not really a motivation for me. Don't necessarily care. 
Zach Poole, touchdown number three. I thought that was going to be missed by Henry Streeter. I don't know where the help was. That play is good. It seems like if you force that strong safety to play the tight end, Zach Poole will be open on the post like it's nothing. No one even close. But if the safety chooses to pick up Poole on the post, Tyler Branham, the tight end, gets wide open. That seems like a pretty good play. No one was even within a mile of Zach Poole. Good blocks for Javius Bond, finally. We're not going to score 50. We're not really trying to. Unless Javius Bond takes this one to the house. Which he's not going to, I would say, more than likely. And that is another nice run for him, though. So his numbers end up looking a little bit better than they actually were. But 45-10 is your final. I mean, we are way better than the Bearcats. It was a little bit close at first, but, you know, we pulled away. We improved to 3-1. Sam Houston drops to 0-5. Streeter again with another game of just one incompletion. Insanity. He goes for 252 through the air. Five touchdowns, no picks. We're on one right now with Henry Streeter. Also had 110 on the ground. Insanity. Receiving Zach Poole is a big part of our success. Eight for 110, two touchdowns. It's hard to remember the last time somebody had eight catches for us in a game. That's a lot. Jeremy Davis, three for 46. Boozer, one for 28 in the touchdown. Clay Ivey with the bomb for a touchdown. Very different stat lines than we saw last game. I don't think anyone had 50 yards. And like six or seven different players had three catches. More of a deep threat offense in this one. A lot of TFLs for Morgan Merriman. Two sacks. Mitch Dora had a nice game. No picks, of course, in this one. But just a really dominant showing. And, yeah, we looked really good in this one. So close to the next coach level, level 18. Just not quite there yet. Although, I don't know. Can we get XP as we simulate a week? Seems like that's a possibility. But as we know, recruiters maxed out for us so far until we can get elite recruiter which we're not close to because we have not signed a top five class yet. And this one is not going to be one of them. But uh, I think at some point we're going to unlock Tactician. That gets us extra XP per win, which gets our coach upgraded faster, which could help us unlock a motivator a little bit more. And this also makes our team better. And that's what we want. We want a better team, shockingly. But this was a really big win. 45-10. Yes, it's an inferior team. But anytime you have a top recruit in attendance, you want to show out and impress them even against a bad team. You have teams that are programs that, you know, bring these top guys in to see, you know, Texas play Louisiana Monroe, for example, right? So even though it's a big time program against a really small or program, you know, these still seeing a team dominate is still valuable. And that's what we did today. And we're probably about to get the number one player in the nation a five-star recruit, a big-time safety, and did they fix the glitch where it didn't pop up? They didn't. So, that's really, really, really annoying. And with a title update today, you'd think, oh, we might fix that. They didn't. So, that's annoying. Morgan Merriman is your Conference USA Defensive Player of the Week. And then, Zach Poole is your Conference USA Offensive Player of the Week. Three total touchdowns. He might even be your national player of the week, but he is not. We are up to number 13 in the nation, and we have added two big-time recruits. The number one player in the nation, Byron Willingham, safety from Alpharetta, Georgia. Got him on campus in week four, and now he's in the class just a week or two later. 96 speed, 92 acceleration, 90 agility, 83 zone coverage. You'd hope for more abilities. He's got no abilities other than the two mental ones, but no actual physical abilities. Kind of annoying, but he is a specimen of an athlete. Six foot one ninety three with ninety six speed, eighty three zone at free safety. He's incredible. And Antonio Marcus joins the squad. Gotta love that. Got him on campus, and we got a decent boost here with, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching plus the plus 75% for a blowout. 
even though it's against a lower tier opponent. Antonio Marcus, he's got bronze quick jump, 82 speed, 80 power moves, and with quick jump, we know that acceleration is going to be at least mid to high 80s. So he could end up being a great player for us. And at 6'5", 241, he's like prototypical rush end size. Now, this is a little bit concerning. Cornell Funchess and Paul Ahmad, two really good corners that we want to add to the class, have play style deal breakers. Currently, we have a C. We need a B-. And that's going to be totally interception-based. We are not getting interceptions. These are two excellent cornerback prospects. We should be bringing in Chad Loper at some point. Although Clemson's going to be making a bit of a push. We just don't... Oh, they did change it. It's only a plus one now for campus personality. Because we don't really have good motivational factors there. All right, so the update really has changed a lot of things. You almost wonder if hard selling doesn't even make sense anymore. With only B+, plus, C-, minus, and D. We could be on the verge of losing Chad Loper. Which would be devastating. We'll change to uh, send the house, DM players, search social media. But that's not really where we want to be. In week six, we have Western Kentucky on the schedule. We're doing quite well. We're number 13 in the country now. You guys know how I feel about Western Kentucky. Their mascot upsets me, to say the least. So we are doing quite well. We do have college football playoff aspirations here in 2026 because we could be the highest ranked group of five team that's an auto bid into the cfp it's very early though it's only week six but we've been good so far and losing to miami was tough it ends up looking close but we were dominated but since then we're on a bit of a roll western kentucky's three and two overall it's an 11 30 a.m start which is kind of insane but welcome to conference usa i guess however we have in some ways bigger fish to fry we've been recruiting cornerback really really heavily and if you look at corner paul ahmad and cornell funches currently have us locked out why is that it's a playing style deal breaker if you've been watching us play you may have noticed we're not getting that many interceptions and when you're dealing with players that really want you to get interceptions we only have three so we are not going to be able to bring in the corners we need unless we start intercepting passes. We're going to, of course, really try to win. That's super important. But we are also going to try and sell out, play for picks, and see if we can bring in some of these top DBs. Because right now, uh, that's kind of the only chance we got. I did make a change. Chad Loper, I'm trying to sway. I don't know what my chances are of making that happen. But I figure we're about to get hawked down by Clemson and Florida. They might even pass us this week. My only real chance is trying to sell Chad Loper once I can get a sway to work. I only have one of three. The odds of getting the sway off are not especially high. But if we can get it to work, we have a chance. So it's not great right now. But I'm, I, I really would like to add Chad Loper. He's a five-star corner who's really, really good. And I worry that if we just try to weather the storm and send the house, I don't think we're going to get him. So I'm taking a bit of a risk, taking a bit of a chance. The corner class should still end up being pretty good, even if we can't land Chad Loper, because I, I, I do think we're going to end up getting interceptions enough to get at least one of these guys in the class, even though FSU is trying to chase us down on both. Matt Russo will join the class. He's a really solid player. Nick Martino, it's going to be close. If he doesn't end up committing to Florida, I think we can get him after this week if he if we if he commits after this week obviously it's a waste of 65 points but i think we would be able to get him anyway a lot in the air right now we need interceptions how do we make that happen we've got to go up early we need to force the hilltoppers to run the foot or to pass the football from behind not run the football and here's this little freak He's got his dainty little feet. His bizarre head shape, to say the least. Western Kentucky's a decent team. 
but we are capable of beating them. We're the number 13 team of the country. We are better, right? It's all about, can we force interceptions and win today? That's what we need to do. Here we go. Western Kentucky going to return. We need interceptions today. Now, I think the way I'm going to try and make that happen, as we'll see quarterback Caden Veltkamp, has not thrown an interception the entire year so far. Over 1,000 yards passing already. What we need to do... I might even end up putting faster corners in the game. We need to play everything, I think, really, really shallow. And... I, mean, I might even go 0, 0, 0 for everything. We'll start 0, 5, 5 for these drops. For flats, obviously, it makes sense. For curl flats, you want to get maybe a little bit more depth than that. But we'll try 5 yards. We need picks today. We're going to play everything shallow. If they go to the flat, that's where we need to capitalize and get these takeaways. We need picks desperately. And of course, they're going to be running the football. That's what we need to avoid. I don't mind a hurry up offense though. That means more uh, offensive snaps for them. And that is absolutely wide open. And of course, we can't break down and make the play. That's going to be a long touchdown to start for Western Kentucky. The pursuit angles of this game are so tough, and I tried to switch on and do it manually, so we didn't get that. But then we over-pursue. You can't change direction. Big touchdown, Hilltoppers. Worst possible start. Henry Streeter has been phenomenal lately. He's going to need to be today. We're already playing down. We're on the road. This is a tough spot to be in. We'll find Gunderson. He's had a pretty good year for us. He's made some nice plays. But Tyler Branham still our, our go-to guy. Zach Poole's been getting involved a little bit more uh, often recently. That isn't exactly what I wanted. We had two routes that kind of ended up right on top of each other. But the pass is completed to the freshman Joey Boozer. Try to find JB is Bond. There he is on the run. Nice play. Stepping up with Streeter. Kind of flushed out of the pocket there. Or at least it felt like it. Felt like we were collapsing a little bit. Second and four. I mean, this is when you might want to take a shot play. And we're just going to get pressured. I wanted Zach Poole. Looked like he was going to get open. But we just didn't have the time. And that's the problem with play action. Is you're setting yourself up for failure. If they get any type of pressure. And we're going to use Javius Bond as a lead blocker. Pick up somebody though. All right. Clay Ivy cannot hear the play change at the line. But the check down is open, and that's been really effective for us lately. Zach Poole fumbles the ball. Tell me he was down. Zach Poole has been such an electric factory for us lately, and now coughs up the football. We'll, of course, take another look at this, but this would be such a bad turnover. We need interceptions, and we now could potentially go down by two scores. Not exactly going to be forcing the Hilltoppers into passing situations. We need this to be down. We'll take another look. Poole, of course, on the shallow cross. That's really not a great look at it, is it? I mean, Zach Poole is technically still up here, right? And the football maybe starts to move before his putt goes down. It's worth a challenge at this point of the game, and it's close enough to where I think we could get it overturned. Yeah, I, I don't think that's necessarily a clear fumble. I don't know if, if Madden or College Football 25 has any, you know... Uh, if, if it's not clear and obvious, you know, ruling on the field stands or whatever. I think this is going to get overturned. I think the offense is going to stay on the field. It looked like he was down. That ends up being the call. No fumble for Zach Poole, but now the game's like, he fumbled. He's cold now. He didn't fumble. Don't worry about it. Good blocks, though. Jeremy Davis brings us down inside the 10. It's a good drive for us to start if you, you know, factor in that that wasn't actually a fumble. Zach Poole doesn't seem to be aware of that, though. He's ice cold. We're getting on the move. Poole's not exactly separating or blocking. I wanted to cut it back, and then we couldn't run out. What is that? Javius Bond tried to cut it back there. Only one yard. And I'm starting to get worried. We're not about to find the end zone. Let's actually slant Clay Ivy. He is able to hear the adjustment. If they drop back from the double mug look, we could be in trouble. That's exactly what they do. We're stepping up. Streeter escapes and finds the end zone. All the action was going towards the right of the field. Streeter is able to find just a little bit of space to step up through the offensive line, work to the opposite side of the play, and walk into the end zone. 
Good drive overall. Got a little bit scary there at the end. We'll need to be perfect today. We need... Have I mentioned this? We need interceptions. We need picks. It's going to be tough to intercept that type of a pass. There is a flag, though. Holding would be good. Give them first and long. We catch a little bit of a break there. Sometimes we defend the run so well. Sometimes we really don't. I know that's technically a pass, but it's it's a run, essentially, right? So it gets a little bit dicey in those spots. But first and 17... This is a good spot for us to be in. They're going to get creative again. They're going to run the ball at us. And they're going to get a lot of that back. Under pressure. Veltkamp going down. Matt Humphreys is there. Third and 19. And now we forced them back after they got all of it back. A lot of give and take so far in this game. And it is third and 19. They're going to go wide splits here. And they're going to throw... And they're going to complete and get the first down. We cannot allow third and 19s to get completed. And very easily, might I add. Wide splits feels like a cheat code in this game. I don't know how to stop it. You know, look at this little freak. Ugh. Quincy Wiggins, a transfer with a great play. Third and five. They are going to go hurry up. Do we trust man coverage in this spot? I don't like how we have somebody cross-manned here. He's not going to get over to make the play. Nice tackle! Landers can't get there. Western Kentucky will punt. And on, on third and five, you run the ball there. And just to punt? That doesn't really make any sense to me. If you're going to go for it on fourth and short, sure. I don't really mind a run there, but I don't really get that. Third and five. Trying to step up with Streeter, and we're barely going to get the first down. I didn't love the options through the air, and luckily Streeter's got such phenomenal athleticism that we're able to just run for it whenever we need. It's such a great thing to be able to do, because sometimes receivers aren't open, and sometimes when they are open, I can't find them, right? So being able to scramble, it's such an amazing skill to have. A lot of defenses just can't seem to account for it. And look at this. We're going to have another opportunity here with Streeter. Work back up the field and slide. Streeter well over 60 yards rushing right now. By well over, I mean one yard. So not really. Here's first and 10. Play action. We're going to be running again here. If they're going to not account for Henry Streeter, we will abuse them with the quarterback run game. And these aren't even necessarily design runs, obviously. But... It almost seems like they are with the timing. And that ball is tipped up and thankfully incomplete. Up the middle, Streeter again. Sliding. I wonder if they made an adjustment here. I feel like usually when you slide, you're still contacted and for some reason you're not able to slide. Well, the past few plays when we've slid somewhat late, it's actually letting us slide. Javius Bond, touchdown. 007 into the end zone. Even though he's number 30, but you know, like, Bond. Javius Bond. Not James, Javius. Touchdown, we take the lead. Offense is cooking here. On the ground in a couple different ways. Are you kidding me? How do we not tackle him? We're running next to him. Tackle him! They're really loving running the ball right now. They're loving it. Can you is please throw? Give us an opportunity to recruit who we want to recruit. They're running the ball every play. And I guess, can you blame them? I mean, they're legitimately running the ball every play. Every single play is a run. Hopefully this one won't be. I'd like to be able to shade inside here. It's going to be a check down. I mean, at least they threw it. I got what I wanted. Throwing touchdown. I, wide open over the middle. I mean, that was a lightning fast release on the inside. Looked like some type of a slant, probably. Bates finds the end zone. That's not a celebration. I don't know what that even is. Devin Bates. It's kind of wide open. Yeah, it looked like a slant. And we're just, we're not even close. 
I thought he might have had the takeoff ability with how quickly it looked like he came open. What we're going to do is make a change at DB. We need more speed on the field. Juwan Stevens, the redshirt freshman, and Alani Allen, the redshirt freshman, have significantly more speed for us at cornerback. And I think that hopefully will contribute to takeaways. That's what we're going for. Let's get a quick score. That actually might be enough. Clay Ivy with a step. Ball was not let out nearly enough. That looked like that could have been a huge play. Clay Ivy has pretty good speed. Looked like he had a step. Oh, that's read so well from the Western Kentucky DB. He ran the route for Zach Poole. That's absurd. All right, he's just the best ever. Ah, there was an opportunity. First and 10, will Western Kentucky run the ball every play? Well, we cannot keep up with that, so. Can we not run zone coverage? I don't think we can run man either. That's a tough combination of things that you can't do because those are really the only options. There's zone that can turn into man. That's, I don't know, running back wide open. That's actually a throw behind the line. How is that a, su a successful play? Yeah, it's going to be torched. Alani Allen, we put more speed at cornerback. Doesn't really seem to matter. Touchdown, Hilltoppers. All right, I mean, we've got a game here. Western Kentucky takes the lead with under a minute to play in the first half. I hate this team. Make a play! You're looking at the ball! 22! Get your head out of your ass! What are you doing? Like, is he an idiot? The ball's in the air. React to it. Throw it, please. Not out of the end zone, you bitch. We're gonna go up by 10 here with five seconds to play. We might get an opportunity for a turn. We probably will. Let's see what happens here. He yeah, will have a second or two. Zach Poole can make something happen. Or not. Never mind. All right, not the first half we were looking for, but I feel like we got pretty unlucky with a lot of different things. So, is this going to be able to hold for Western Kentucky? It yeah, will see. We get the football to start the third quarter. We're just jumping right into it. Let's make something happen. Pool with back-to-back -back returns here in the span of a few real-life seconds. And they both go about the same pretty terribly. Javius Bond, big play. Actually still in bounds for a little while there. We actually might go hurry up for a lot of this second half. See what happens. I want to have more time for our defense to be out there to get picks. Streeter, get the ball out for Ivy! There it is! Touchdown, Clay Ivy! Seven will get us seven. Penning the extra point. Clay Ivy, deep shot. We had it earlier. We couldn't hit him. We connect this time around. He's got decent speed. He's playing a little bit more. He and Zach Poole are becoming big-time weapons. They really have the, the Hilltopper mascot on the water tower in the background. That's crazy. Streeter doesn't exactly throw the tightest spiral I've ever seen, but it got there. 57-yard touchdown brings us back within a field goal. All right, defense. Please do something. And by something, I mean, I'm going to be specific. I need interceptions. Badly. Our team sucks. They've got the wide splits. Can I counter that without traveling everybody? The ball floats up, and it's intercepted by McAllister. Finally, a pick. That ball had way too much hang time. That receiver is wide open. Veltkamp just left it up in the air, and it floated. And I know the feeling. It happens to me all the time playing this game, and Madden, really with Gardner Minshew and Raiders franchise. What a play. McAllister's got pretty incredible ball skills. We've seen we've seen him make a couple of really tough interceptions uh, in the past few weeks. He's been a great player. Got him in the transfer portal. And he's he's played great. Good route for Poole. The ball, not so much. There we go. We should have a block here. Branham. Down the sideline, working down the field. Got a great block from the outside. You know, we try to get him like true design looks. 
She's been less and less in recent weeks. Haven't been that effective. We're giving him a chance here. That maybe was read a little bit better by the secondary. However, not a good throw. Get that out to Branham. Does he have a step? Good ball from Streeter. Branham brings us down to the one. I think we go Javius Bond. Touchdown number two of the game. Snap the football. Don't let him get set. Don't let him get ready. Javius Bond. Touchdown. That's the James Bond type celebration. If you were curious what's going on with that. Uh, Javius Bond. Gives us the lead. Javius has been another great transfer portal acquisition for us so far. And he's not exactly breaking off huge runs because we haven't really needed him to do that. We've been moving the ball through the air and he's been finishing off drives, which is great. We are just a machine for rushing touchdowns at the moment, whether it's Henry Streeter or Javius Bond. Even Joey Boozer has uh, had a couple here in recent weeks as well, right? Let's get more picks, though. Need more interceptions. Well, it's going to be tough to pick off anything there. I'm not sure what's going to be better. I feel like in man coverage, we get torched. In zone coverage also, though, things don't typically go well. So it's not easy. <sighs> We're just not there. We just need... We need them to start taking vertical shots. That's going to be... That's going to be a difference maker. Third and five. We've seen them run the ball in this exact spot before. Almost like down to the yard. So we'll, we'll see what they try this time around. I would expect a pass, but you never know. Trying to stay there. It's nothing. Uh, that's Our cloud flats were playing really shallow because we set the depth super shallow. So they're throwing over the back of our zones now. So maybe zero yards isn't the move. Maybe we'll drop those flats back to five. However, we have... You know, we're still playing everything shallow, and when we get caught in man coverage, they're just attacking us to the flats. It's like they know exactly what we're doing and when we're doing it. it, it I mean, these little RPO screens are killing us right now. We have no answer for these. They're not getting a ton of yards, but they're getting enough to keep extending drives. It's really annoying. They're getting the ball out super quickly. Dora's there, forces the incompletion. But not the takeaway, and Western Kentucky will punt from the 41-yard line. That's insane. And it's going to be a touchback. That's such a bad call. Nearly an amazing punt, though, would have made it decent. But they did all that for 20 yards of field position on fourth and short. That's crazy. Step up with Streeter. They're not accounting for the quarterback run. Could be another 100-yard rushing game for Henry Streeter. Would love to get that. We're under pressure and we're sacked. Just couldn't make a decision in time. Wide open Zach Poole. He's got pretty good speed and we're going to get all that back and then some. Big time first down. Could see a screen being actually fantastic here. Just don't need this to be a pick six. That'd be really, really bad. But they're playing off. We just couldn't get any type of momentum going on that. Third and eight. We float that in there. That's a sick play from the backer. Like, that's insane. I don't think I've ever had a linebacker on my team make a play even similar to this. Look where he comes from. And we're watching that dig the entire time. That's, like, the main thing we're looking to go to. And the, the, I'll tell you what, 27 would have flipped around and covered this how we tried to throw there. Clay Ivy actually might have ended up being our best bet. But this dig's coming open. If we can float this in, feather it in perfectly, that's open. This linebacker, though, makes a freak play in coverage. I've never had a linebacker even come close to even doing that. That's uh, nuts. And we have to punt the ball from their territory. But in fourth and eight, it's a little bit different. Also with the lead, a little bit different. Should be a decent punt. Nothing crazy. That's okay. We're right there, man. They're throwing a bubble screen. We're right on the line. 
But, I mean, making the tackle is cool. I just need interceptions. And they're trying to spread things out a little bit here. There should be a ton of space over the middle of the field. They're going to run on third and seven from their own 19. I, I want to win badly, right? I want interceptions. Why are they running the ball in that spot? That's stupid. What is best case scenario? You're not picking up the first. Wide open. Nice throw on the run there. Jeremy Davis trying to juke back across. Not able to get anything extra. And we're, we're keeping it vertical here. I mean, we could absolutely try and take time off the clock. But, I don't know. We, we're keeping them on their toes right now. And there just didn't seem to be much there. Third and four. We need a touchdown. Doesn't have to be on this play, just overall. If we can really extend this lead, I think Western Kentucky is going to start to feel the pressure a little bit, right? And I think they're going to start really trying to air it out as a result. And that's maybe where we can take advantage of them with interceptions. Tyler Branham goes vertical and leaps over the DB. He brings us down to the two-yard line. And I don't, I don't like the defense that they're showing us. Streeter looking for space, puts the ball on the turf. And that's the end of the third quarter. Okay, let's not do that again. Don't gyrate your hips at me. In his Nikes, I, I don't like anything about him. I think it'd be we less weird if he had like furry little shoes. But the fact that he's just wearing Nikes just makes me think it's some weird guy, which it is. That's what a mascot is actually. Streeter, I did this the one thing we said we wouldn't do again. Right back up the middle, lowering the shoulder. Touchdown, Henry Streeter. And we're going to go up by two possessions here. Should be an 11-point lead. And give me some picks. Nice way to contain that. It's actually going to count as a sack there for Melvin Jordan. I miss Z Copper. Z Copper was a great player for us. They're going to go bunch right here. Really spread everything out. Please go to the flat. That's, I mean, super open, which I get, but what are we supposed to play there? We might run like nickel or dime for the rest of the game, get as many DBs on the field as possible, and just have the best chance of actually covering something. Because at this point, they're not really running so much. We should have dropped back to that. I don't want to call a timeout, but I, I don't want to be in 4-3 at all. So... Do we burn a timeout up 11 at this point in the game? I mean, it's it's in consideration, actually. We'll see what happens on this play. Maybe we can force an incompletion. Where a sack would work, too. They're not going to go hurry up off the sack. Matt Humphreys is there. Yeah, get us a nickel. I don't necessarily love cover four quarters, maybe. And we'll try to take away the complete middle of the field. Second and 22. Just launch it deep at us. They get the ball out so quickly. There's not really an opportunity for the ball to hang in the air for too long when they do that. Ah. And they're, they're doing so much hurry up action. So many audibles. I'm trying to run over with Berlin. To screen. We read it, but really can't make a play until they get five yards. And they're going to try a field goal, which is a smart play. Bring it back to a one possession game if they're able to make it. It's far right hash. And his kick towards the left and in. All right. Play action. Did they bite on it? Not really. Let's get a block from Javius Bond there. Streeter out of bounds at 42. He's well over 100 now. 114 on 15 attempts. And I don't know if he's been legitimately sacked. Maybe they've made a play on us at the line of scrimmage. So he's been pretty exceptional every time he takes off. We're going to go deep for Clay Ivy again. And this time we overshot him. Never really had a ton of separation though. You're in his zone defense here. We hit the tight end on the move. That's a nice throw. There's Tyler Branham having a big game for the first time in a minute. Five catches, 96 yards. And we could consider giving it to him again. Didn't hit the button in time, apparently. Number one priority right now, get into field goal range. They're rushing to the outside. We're just going to step up the middle, try to guarantee a field goal. But oh my goodness. They gave us all the way up to the, the first down marker. We're going to try to go for it. 
Yes, it is field goal range probably already. We can go up by two possessions in the spot. But converting gives us a higher chance to win. I think we can get it on fourth and inches, which is exactly what we do. It's a ballsy call there, but it ends up paying off. Need a touchdown. Not really, but kind of, though. Nice spin back from Poole. Again, I, we need interceptions, man. We need Western Kentucky to just start launching it down the field. Poole's going to have one-on-one. -on -one. We're not. Stepping up with Streeter. They really covered that pretty well. They're aware of the scramble at this point, I would say. And that's the two-minute warning. Third and two. Boozer in motion. Nobody runs with him. He should be wide open. The DB made a phenomenal play. We're gonna call we're gonna kick a field goal at this point, of course. Gotta go up by two possessions in this spot. It's fourth and one. I feel less good about that. Under two minutes to play now. I think we should be able to kick this field goal. I, I miss all the time, but this one should be going in. It's wide left. Uh, I mean, I, I moved the arrow, it felt like so far over the right, and then I missed with the timer. It's a touchdown game. I mean, worst case scenario really is missing a, a field goal there. So open. Six spin move, multiple broken tackles. Western Kentucky, instant answer for the score. Okay. I mean, I, I don't even have the energy to rage over that. Uh, I can tell you I'm extremely frustrated. And I'm going to leave it at that for right now. The irony of getting an interception in this spot when it doesn't even count for anything would be great. It's 35-35. Zach Poole gets a block as well. Juking back to the inside was really hoping to force a missed tackle there. But a lot of times we just are not very good after the catch. Not nearly as good as the CPU. I mean, we had two potential receivers in these spots. We go for Clay Ivy, and it's knocked down by Ward. I saw Branham the entire time up the seam. I thought it was a lower percentage play than the Clay Ivy, who's got a little bit more speed, of course. Check down to Javius Bond. You gotta outrun him. That'll work. I wonder if Western Kentucky would just flat out let us score. Well, they're going to, because Branham cooks everybody up the seam. The strong safety shaded over the wheel, leaving Branham wide open for the go-ahead touchdown. Now, they're not really upset about this because they have a minute now to answer. They need a touchdown. They have a timeout. But I'm not really mad with uh, scoring a touchdown in that spot. Could we have, you know, played that a little bit differently and really just iced the game? Yeah, but I think you got to take the lead when you can absolutely guarantee it. And that's what we did on that play. Now, hopefully we forced Western Kentucky into throwing the football down the field. And that should result in an interception if things go well. That was nearly disastrous, by the way. Make a play! It's intercepted by Alani Allen! Alani Allen could win it for us. Big time interception, he checked into the game, got cooked earlier, and now has probably given us the win. Alani Allen, the red shirt freshman, should allow us to narrowly beat Western Kentucky here on the road. I would, I would happily see a replay at any moment, by the way. How about now? There's Alani Allen. He's got good size. He was an athlete that we ended up deciding to play at corner over anything else. And you can see that size really playing a big impact there. Veltkamp just can't find a way to get around him. They're committing to stopping the run. Branham down the field, touchdown number two. They're run committing to try and stop the run, and we are trying to make this game look like we're a little bit better. Could have gone victory formation and just ended it, but you know what? I hate this little freak mascot, and I'm trying to embarrass the Hilltoppers. That's what's going on. I want 50. Branham, two point is good. It's 50 to 35. How about it? How's that feel, Hilltoppers? You just got rolled down the hill. The Trenton State Titans are the king of the hill. How about that? We're going to murder the mascot. Oh, Lord. We've allowed 13 catches for 233 yards. 
to their wide receiver one. Yeah, Devin's played us pretty well today, unfortunately. 18 seconds to go. Looking for that interception. Throw the ball. Veltkamp is such a bitch. Fourth and three, 12 seconds to play. Searching for that third interception. And they check down. That's crazy. Last play of the game. And they check down again. You deserve to lose by 50 to 35. You deserve that. I'm glad we, we ran it up and went for two. Dude. We end up with two interceptions. It's not bad. I think that should let us back into the recruitment for those big time corners. Streeter continues to play great of late. 384, five touchdowns. Only completing about 60% of his passes. But for the most part was very, very good today. We allowed 444 passing yards. Streeter goes for 384. Of course, it had that BS pick, but mostly was pretty awesome. And then added 141 on the ground, two touchdowns, did fumble a couple of times. And uh, two touchdowns for Javius Bond on only eight attempts. Receiving, Tyler Branham had a big time game today, of course. You know, one of those at the end of the game, they just kind of gave to us. But it counts, all counts the same. And then defensively, wish we had more turnovers. Humphreys had a great game, three TFLs, two sacks. Interceptions for Alani Allen and Colby McAllister. Needed more, but that's okay. We went up to level 18 there. We did. So now 10 coach points. We'll probably spend those here. And I think unlocking tacticians the way to go, as I, I mentioned recently. We'll get more XP for wins. And we'll have the opportunity to get boosts to man and zone coverage for DBs, which could be valuable. I worry that it won't be, but I think it could be valuable. Now, before we simulate, this is my concern, right? Is if we look at the recruitment of Chad Loper, there isn't necessarily a ton we could do, but for Nick Martino, it's so close that he might not commit to Florida after this week. If he doesn't, we would want to schedule him right now for a week seven visit right? And then we could potentially get him to commit following week seven. And we're playing a gamble game of does he commit to Florida or does he not? It's so close. He's a six foot three corner with 98 speed. So I really think he might be going to the Gators, unfortunately. I'm going to gamble. It's 40 points. I took him off some of the new players we added to our board and I'm going to hope that he just doesn't commit to the Gators, and we'll get him in on a visit for the UTEP game, right? Now, that's going to hurt Chad Loper, but I'm hoping he just doesn't commit to Florida. We are now up to number nine in the country, because that wasn't a close game. Where are we on Chad Loper? The Gators are making up huge ground on us. Unbelievable ground. Because, I mean, we the sway did not work. We're not really selling anything of value. Do we leave the sway on? We're going to go behind to the Gators. We will be going behind, unless this is an incredible visit. This uh, uh, Man, this is a tough spot on Loper. Tell me he didn't commit to the Gators. He committed to the Gators. So he wasted an extra 40 points on Nick Martino. That sucks. But what are you going to do? We took a chance. We gambled. Did not pay off. And our playing style is still a C. So we can't even get these other corners at the moment. We're up to five interceptions, but that's not ranking very high. We need a lot more than that. I'll leave Martino on the board. I, I can't remember if Nick Martino is deal breaker is championship contender. Right now, we have an A for that. I don't remember what his deal breaker was. It could be championship contender. If it's proximity to home, we have no chance. If He might not even have a deal breaker. I think he would, though. You think Lambo would be faster than 76 speed. That's terrible. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. 87 speed's good. And he's a gem. All right. Delvin Mock. We will try to add to our board here and see if we can bring him into the class. So, 
recruiting isn't exactly going perfectly right now. I think that goes without saying. But, um... Oh, George Nwangu's actually very good. Get him on a week eight, maybe? It's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it to really go after him now. Our cells align so perfectly with him as well. This would be a very good add to our class. But that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We are going to really have to start forcing more turnovers if we're going to even stand a chance of... Yeah, we're going to go for this as well. If we're going to stand a chance of getting any of those corners. You know, we already lost out on one that we wanted quite a bit. And I really do not want to lose out on the others. So, we'll see what happens. We might have to move these around a little bit. But as you can see, FSU's closing in. They're going to pass us on Paul Ahmad. And that's really, really frustrating. And... We might be able to get back in the game on those guys. You know, I wonder with Chad Loper, do we keep the sway on? Or do we just sell what we do have, which is B+, plus, C-, minus, and D, which is not great. And then put points other places. The Week 7 visit could be big. But I don't know if it's going to be big enough. Alright, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Take it easy.